he wants to confront McLean or talk bad about McLean or any other driver. But I'm talking about a 12-year-old kid that had no say in what was going on. I'll defend him to the end. Like I would anybody else that, that I know isn't a cheater. Right. Okay. Now, if, if people were saying that was Bobby Smith is a cheater and we know that they have an honest program, I'd say, you know what? I have a hard time believing that. And in this case, I'm going to say that. I think, I, again, I think I have a hard time believing that that team was intently, you know, cheating with knowledge. If anything, I think it's it's a testament to the tech at the track. Absolutely. They're, now that's a big statement. They're come. They're com- they yes. warned a bunch of street stock drivers yes. on night number one about some infractions on the cars that they were going to go ahead and let them go with it. But night number two, they're bringing the measuring tape back, and yep. it better be right, or yep. you're not going on the track. You're right. That and I'll tell you right now, Willamette Speedway drivers' attention in the pit area, tech is here. Okay. Tech is here. It's going, yeah. It, if you're doing something you shouldn't be doing, you might want to get that fixed because they're probably going to find it. Okay? Again, I don't think that was done on purpose to go and, and win with cheating as as knowingly that they're che- I mean, anything can happen, I guess. Anything can happen. I don't think that's the case. It, um, the victory isn't as sweet when you're cheating and everybody says well, it. So. You're right. You're right. That, and that's, I think, any racer, any racer will. Now, as a racer, I also understand. Pushing I, the envelope. Absolutely. If, if it's a gray area, what do you do? You do it. You put it to the to the black mark. Here's the one thing I don't like. You know, the one thing I don't like is in the rules, it says if it doesn't say you can, you can't. Yeah. I, I just, that is such a broad statement, okay? I understand what they're trying to do writing that rule the way they wrote it. It's so you don't have to have a rule book 33 pages deep. Well, that's what we used to do in drag racing. We'd have that thing this thick. But I think we're at a point now in this sport where technology is so good like you said, with this Schrader valve on the shocks, what are they trying to do with it? Okay, Maybe I think... Probably five or ten different things. And we don't know. Mm-mm. But I think we're at a point now with our with the sport we love that the rules have to be written. Mm-hmm. I think that, that opening that statement up, you know, if it doesn't say you can, you can't, is, is so broad. People are going to look at what you've put in print and interpret it their way or that's ah, a gray area. It doesn't really say we can't do it. Let's try it. I get that. I've done it in karting. You've done it in the levels you've raced at, Dom. If mm-hmm. you're a racer and you haven't tested that gray area, oh yeah, I don't know how competitive you really are. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't blame anybody for pushing that envelope in, in situations where you think, well, you know, it doesn't really say we can't do this. This part might help us. Mm-hmm. Let's try it. That's the way it's been at Willamette for 60 years. Yeah. I mean, I hate to say this. and This is going to sound terrible, but everything, you know, I've only been here a few years, and everybody's like, don't worry about it. We're going to Willamette. That's what I've well, heard for and, years. And, and, and <laughs> I you're hate right. To say you're that. right. I mean, again, we know guys that have done some things in their cars mm-hmm. that are beyond questionable, but yeah. when you know there's not tech, Mm-hmm. You're going to do what you think you need yeah. to do to win. You can't blame a guy. No. You can't blame. I mean, if it's this is, and I just read an article. I just read an article not just this this week about rules versus no rules. Mm-hmm. And they were talking about actually this particular article was talking about no rules <laughs> actually helps you race cheaper. Yeah. Okay. And. There's a whole lot less to question. You know, I mean, it takes, I, I, and this is what, I, and I, the other argument in this no rules deal was the ingenuity. Yeah. Okay. For some of us old school guys, we like to be able to see the ingenuity and what guys can develop and, and how they put stuff together. That is the coolest thing in all of motorsports, in my opinion. Okay. Um, but rules are rules, and I, I am one of those people that will say, 
if you're going to have rules, they need to be in print. There's no questioning that. There's no questioning saying, no, well, that doesn't really, no, it says right here, can't do this, but you can do that. Okay? You have to have this. That part is not allowed. I know that makes a lot of work for anybody writing those rules, and it's more time-consuming. But if you do that, if you do that, there is no question. There is no question, and you can't say, ah, well, we didn't understand that. We didn't know. Yeah, no, yeah, you did, because it's right there in black and white, buddy. Yeah. You know, and I don't. Again, I don't think that's. Um, I don't think that is the the case here. No. You know what I mean. So, okay, so these are the super sport rules. So we're looking, okay, car has to be 2,400 pounds with the driver after the race. Mm -hmm. Rule number one, right at the top. Okay, there's our weight rule. Bead locks are allowed, aluminum wheels allowed. Great. Asphalt racing slicks only, no dirt tires. We all do that. Steel block only. Aluminum heads allowed with 50 pounds added in front of the (laughs) the uh, motor motor plate. (laughs) Wow. 2450. Yeah. If you have aluminum heads. Mm-hmm. Okay. And I'm not against that. Nope. I'm not against that. I mean, I if get you're going to hang do. extra 50 pounds in front of that, well, that's up to you. Right. Right. Um, we've got uh, 23 degree plus or minus 2 degrees. Okay. Keeps the cost down. You're not going sure. out and buying these 17, 18 degree heads that are just, you know. Okay. Um, shocks. Non-adjustable. One non-adjustable unaltered shock per wheel. No Schrader valve or bladder slash bulb type shock allowed. Okay. So let me, is, is this updated? This is updated from? That's right off the website. Okay, but what, I, what I'm asking is, has this rule been written? Was it prior to this, before the night of the race? It's always been that one. It has. Yeah. Okay, so if it says there's no Schrader valve, okay, you shouldn't have it on the car. Again, I don't know who 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 made this mm-hmm. mistake. I don't know. I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just saying it happened, and it sucks for everybody involved. It sucks for the whole team. It sucks for the sponsors on that team. It sucks for the driver. Um, but it, it is there. So, um, legal, okay, legal aluminum bodied shocks are AFCO 1300 series. There's your shock rule right there. If you're going to run an aluminum body, it has to be the AFCO. 1300 series. All other aluminum body shocks are illegal. Okay. I don't know what brand of shock this was. I, I, I don't know. Again, I, there's not a lot about this. I don't know. I'm not I'm not trying to say that I'm an expert on the situation. I'm not trying to say I know what happened or I'm, I'm not certainly not accusing anybody of anything. I don't know how it happened. What we do know is it happened and it, it cost the kid a win. Um, there's a lot of... Okay. This is something that I, I don't think I've ever seen another racetrack do. Now, they got real particular in this division with shock package rules. Right. Okay. So, they legal name aluminum. brands in there. Yeah, they, they have outlawed name, specific name <laughs> brands of shocks you, can, you cannot. Okay, Coney, Pro, and Bilstein, still body shocks allowed. No Olin's or Integra shocks of any kind allowed, still body or not. No Olin's, no Integra. And I think that's done because of cost. Sure, because otherwise if you buy the high dollar late model shocks and pop on there. You right. of course you're gonna. And I, I, I'm actually I like that rule. Sure, I like that rule because this is a class that is is not meant to be a, a, an elite late model class. Right. That's why I picked it. I was like, this is you know, it's a great class. Yeah. Okay, so we know that you can use Coney Pro and Bilstein, but they have to be a steel body. Mm-hmm. We know there's no aluminum body shocks unless it's an Afco 1300 series and no Schrader valve, um, or Bladder slash bulb type shock. Okay. No titanium or magnesium on the hubs. Da, da, da. Yeah, that's so that's, that's our shock pack. We, you we know what's interesting? Rules. Go all the way to the bottom of that rule page. It Maximum body height no. at rear of car. No, there's one, there's a one rule that applies to all the classes that's at the bottom of the page. On, is it super sports or sportsman? It's not on the supers because the last one is the maximum body okay. height. No, there's, there's a rule in there. Saying everything from nitrous oxide to this and that, that applies in all classes. Okay. And if you didn't read that, not saying that anybody would, but my point is it's in a strange spot. That should be on every class. Let me take a look. Yeah, I'll, yeah I'll I'll got, I got you. So, again, 
Um, just one of those bummer deals. And, you know, it was kind of the low light of the weekend to see a kid yeah. have his heart broke. I mean, he he truly is one of my heroes. <laughs> I will love watching. Well, him. he he um, he's definitely uh, he's definitely a real talent. There it is. So had the win taken away. B.J. Donofrio got the got the win. Night number two. B.J. Donofrio got the win. So he went back to back. Now, you got to remember, night number one was his first career feature. Oh, that's awesome. At the Clare Cup. Yeah. And then to come out and back it up again. And, and night number two, he was fast, man. Yeah. That 99 car. And the funny thing about it is he's in a backup car. Wow. He's in a backup car because something happened to his original car. He's actually in Doug Elkins' backup car. Wow. And after the race, I, I saw Doug. And Doug, or as he was pulling in on night number two, Doug looks at me and goes, yeah, I saw you talking to BJ. I said, "Yeah, we were kind of, you know, give him the high five for the, you know, the good run last night." And he goes, "Just so you like," and this, he goes, "Just to let you know, Corey." He goes, "I'm taking that car back from him after tonight." <laughs> <laughs> and he went out and got the win again. Um, kind of, kind of a funny, kind of a funny deal. But though, that's a team now that has really come on. That Super Sport team out of the, you know, the Skyline Ford, Oregon Collective, Donna Frio, Elkins Stables has come alive. There's three cars out of there that are just, they're fast, man. Those dudes are fast. Um, so here, okay, swears so trucking chat line. Roger Snyder. Oh, boy. <laughs> this guy has, Your he doesn't, done. listen, <laughs> Snyder does not stir the pot with a spoon. He's actually got an oar that he uses, <laughs> and he stirs that sucker. Maybe, maybe in a snow shovel. I don't know. It's big. He says, my sponsor would be okay if the driver nudged the rules a bit. Just saying. Yeah, he also is his own sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you expect? You expect nothing less from Roger Snyder. Now, I did get a sneak peek of his car he's bringing out. It's nice. The wrap, it's, it's done. It, fit, it definitely fits the barbecue theme, uh, the number. Um, we all know the – I'm going to say it. I'm telling everybody, Roger, the number on his car – I thought was pretty creative. It's a pretty cool deal. We all know the name of his company, Roger That Barbecue. His number, 10 4. 10 <laughs> it's got, It fits, right? It's cool. Come on. So, anyway, back to Super Sports. That was, that was <laughs> night one. Um, unfortunate. Unfortunate deal. Let's get into. Let's get into our uh, sport mods. Night number one. Now this sport mod class, we had we had twelve cars on night one. And I think ten of the twelve are easily capable of winning the A main. You want to talk about another competitive field of cars. This is getting to be every bit as competitive as the street stocks. I'm not kidding you guys. You guys have seen it, what these sport mods are doing. I don't know if you can really, as a race fan, ask for anything better from a, uh, from a class that is a, what, you want to call them a limited class? Sure. Uh, compared to the IMCA modifieds. I mean, these guys are on three links, and they're running just as fast lap times as the A-mods. Yeah, they're not A-mods. <laughs> IMCA <laughs> modifieds. Here we go. Well, I, I'm, t- I'm talking to the masses. You're going to have a lot of these guys call them A-mods. And they don't know what they're talking about then. I'm not going to no. argue with you. You know. You will. When you see these guys, let's look at the lap times in, in the in the. Okay. So lap times in the feature, when the track goes really really slick, the modifieds are clearly much faster. Now you get them in qualifying, lap times are really really close. Okay. Um. We had 11 cars. We had one car. Kyle McDonald in the 15M did not start. I think it's some motor issues in the heat race. Yeah, he, he pretty much tore it up, what he said. Did he? Yeah. Okay, that's, un, that's unfortunate because, you know, he's had a tough tough time lately yeah. racing. Actually, Jordan was driving it. Oh, Jordan was. That's yeah. right, Jordan. I, I meant yeah. to say that. Um, so 11th through 1st on night number one, we had Michael Wilcox in the 98W at the back of the pack. This guy had easily, if I were to give out an award for the hard luck award, this guy here gets it. All weekend long, this guy struggled and struggled, and the car just wasn't underneath him, and uh, he just couldn't get it to hook up. It was fishtailing. It was just really struggled with the setup on that race car. Um, he finished 11th. Just ahead of him, I was surprised, was Matt Sanders in the number two, the car out of Brookings, the Sanders brothers. 
that's a fast car. And he finished 10th. 